what about, I mean, you, you did allude to this briefly, co combining with abiraterol and enzalutamide, denosumab. There is some provocative, maybe hypothesis generating data from the early access program. And have you any comment on that? Pot pot potentially suggesting a synergy there. Yes. So first of all, we know it's perfectly safe yeah. to administer radium in combination with abiraterol or enzalutamide. There's no concerns about the safety of the combination. Yes. And as you say, the um, observational data shows that men who have received radium with one of the AR-targeted drugs seem to live longer than those who received radium without. Yeah. Of course, that's pretty weak evidence. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, and so I'm going to be very interested in the data that comes out hopefully next year from the ERA 223 trial yes. uh, and subsequently from an ERTC trial of ENSA with radium. So that's so the ERA 223 is looking at abiraterone versus abiraterone plus radium. Yes. So starting radium at the same time as starting abiraterone. And I, I'm hopeful that, that will support what I believe is the right thing to do. Yeah. What's your take? How, how, when do you start radium in relation to Abbey or Enza? Well, I mean, I think, uh, like most people, I think probably Abbey or Enza tends to come first line in ter uh, from, the, from the initial development of castration-resistant disease, uh, as opposed to chemotherapy, for example. But I, in my practice, certainly, we try to get radium in as early as possible. I, I don't really worry about having it before chemotherapy. I've I think there's good evidence and also I know from my practice that giving chemotherapy post radium is a perfectly safe thing to do. There's no particularly extra toxicity. But I particularly like the idea of keeping the patients well. This is the kind of higher practice. And I think one of the things I like most about radium 223 is the very good safety profile. So if a patient is well, the treatment is not going to make them unwell. I, I rarely see patients becoming severely toxic in any way from radium-223, as opposed to many of the other therapies which can adversely affect quality of life due to toxicity. So I think it's an attractive therapy early on, as well as the fact that you're potentially getting in before visceral disease develops, you're hopefully getting in the survival benefit. But very importantly, the patient should remain well and yes. hopefully you know, prolong time to progression. But yeah. So I'm attracted to the idea of using radium and starting it at the same time as you start abiorenza. Yeah. I've got reservations about adding in radium in patients who are already on abionenza and who are progressing biochemically. Because yeah. so my worry is that if you take patients who have responded well to abionenza, their bone scans have gone pretty quiet. Yeah, sure. And then if they start to get biochemical failure, their bone scans are probably still pretty quiet. And so maybe that's not the time to get the most out of your radium treatment. Maybe we should do a bone scan. And see what it looks like, you know, and decide based on, you know, if the bone scan is gone quiet, then maybe radium isn't. Right. Yeah, so maybe. Interested in comments from yeah, I think colleagues? If you look at the trial you did there, what has changed is that pain is occurring much later than before. Yeah. And I think that uh, to me, when I see stampede latitude, wh one of the benefits, whether it's docetaxel or abiraterol, is that they may live a little bit longer, but we're kind of compressing the awful phase because. The problem of prostate cancer is not to die from prostate cancer. I mean, we have to die anyway. It's sad, but dead. No, the problem is that kind of very poor phase that is going before they die. And to me, and we, we had this discussion with Dinozumab when we, we had this discussion with the patient, if you have to choose between dying one day without any symptoms, but you don't die later that you're supposed to die, or prolonging life in poor condition. Most choose the first one, except if they're waiting something like the daughter get married, they're going to get a, a kid or something like this, you know. But it's very important that we compress as much as we can, and we do that quite well. But the problem is that if you rely on pain to give radium, no, because pain comes very late. And I consider it as a failure to leave a painful patient going on. We're coming too late to get sick cycle. Because uh, as you know, the company has run that uh, pass, so uh, post-approval safety study uh, that is called Reassure. And I'm surprised that there's still a high proportion of patients who receive less than five cycle. And when you look at the concomitant toxicity, the toxicity doesn't explain the fact that they don't receive five or six cycle. So meaning that one of the problem of radium is that if you give it in an exponential phase of progression, something you see when you've given AB and Zadocetaxel, you don't have the time. And on top of that, the drug is a drug of invisible benefit, meaning that you don't have something you can 
feel and say it's working. No, either you trust radium is increasing overall survival or you don't. But if you don't, and if you are a bit like radium agnostic, then PSA start rising. So that, that's where, to me, the secret of radium is finding that stage of the disease where, yes, the patient is progressing, is progressing in a bone dominant phenotype, and you've got a certain amount of time in front of you. If you give it too late after AB and uh, and that's where I think really today the management of the patient and the most important question is not what we start with, but how do we manage patient after first line? And to me, discussion no should not be an ADT patient, but a patient which is on ADT and has received one line of AR. And that's where I still see many of my colleagues waiting too long, adding AB after and of and after. And that's where you end up in that exponential phase. And what you need is not drug, it's a miracle because <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. And that's the secret of Regium is finding the stage where otherwise you give one, two cycle and, and then it's wasting money. So that's very, that's why you have to give it early. Yeah. I agree that it's a big problem if they're not getting the full five cycles because usually it's bad patient selection in, uh, yeah. in my experience.